a hard-boiled turtle slapper. Hey, what's up, party people? Mm. Uh, that didn't feel right. I uh, I was impostering. Let's let's try that again. Hey, what's up, everybody? Daniel here from Never Enough. Uh, let's keep it real. Mostly sound bars. So before jumping in, you know, if you're a fan of these videos, maybe consider poking that northwardly facing thumb. That would be the one going like this. And you know, while you're in the neighborhood, subscribing. Also, if you're ever interested in the products I'm reviewing or perhaps the equipment I use to capture all this nonsense, scurry down to the description and check out the links. Yes, they're affiliate links. It doesn't cost you anything extra, though it does support the channel, helps to keep these sound bars you wanna see finding their way to my magic desk. And you know, keeps the uh, sparkly lights on. All right, back to sound bars. I have a Q950T correction for my last video. While Samsung does not call out Dolby Vision as being supported, it does seem to pass Dolby Vision, if this badge is telling the truth. In general, for my videos, the sound bars continue to be somewhat mysterious and exactly the features they support. Maybe take some time to check out the description for updates for any corrections, clarifications I might issue after the release of this video. Well, anyway, it turns out my combined hour or so of Q950T jabbering has kind of provided you with, let's say, glossy coverage of codec audio quality differences. I want to absolve my sins in this video and give you a better idea of what to expect when you play different kinds of audio formats on the Q950T. This might give you a better sense of whether this bar is for you. A big point I want to cover is how LPCM is handled considering it's not technically supported on the bar. LPCM, in case you were wondering, is a common format for moving multi-channel uncompressed audio. Largely used by gaming consoles and more my speed, the Apple TV. Long story. Anyway, parents didn't buy me a Nintendo during a critical development period. Samsung, from multiple sources, states PCM 2.0, not LPCM, is supported. Okay, so then, like, what happens when you plug the Apple TV into the soundbar? Is everything downscaled? Does something explode? Does the bar go uh, 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 or you know, something like that? Maybe if the sound mode was set to sassy. But don't use that mode, it's overprocessed. In the second half, I'll wrap up with two DTS versus Dolby performance comparisons. This is a new video format for me, but this is how I think the video should work. I'll rummage through a few movies, physical and streaming, to get a mix of Dolby and DTS formats, find the action scenes, which typically have the most soundy stuff going on. I'll measure decibels as a superficial but objective peak into sound fullness, and whether you might get artifacts, so stuff like weird channel volume changes or drops. Something like this, when only the left side of the bar decides to play. It's all good. You do you, man. My test bench includes a 55-inch LG OLED C9, a 2017 4K HDR Apple TV, the NVIDIA Shield TV Pro, a Samsung 4K Blu-ray player, and a handful of 4K DTS and Dolby physical disc with, mmm, crunchy audio. My streaming examples are from Netflix and Hulu. I kept the volume set to 20 for all sound tests. I tested in the standard audio mode, where for the most part, the channel output should be executed as prescribed. Well, it took me forever to figure out what was going on, but let me just say, if you're in standard mode, you may very well not be in standard mode. To get to this realization, I had to go through a beautiful mind type frenzy, putting my ears right on the speakers over and over again, back and forth, and going through all kinds of formats and media boxes. I was always getting inconsistent results in terms of speaker behavior. I was about to lose it, delete the channel, move off the grid, but I finally figured it out, I think. You see, when you turn on the soundbar, okay, when I turn on my soundbar, well, the bar and apps say you are in standard mode, if that's where you left it. You are not really in standard mode. You are in surround mode, where all 9.1.4 channels are used. If you toggle to a different sound mode and come back to standard, you will notice speakers playing as you would expect. Let me talk you through an example. So, do to do, I turn on the TV and soundbar, skip over to Hulu that plays in stereo, so only the center left, center right, and sub should be in play and start playing a clip in standard mode. What you'll hear is some sort of 5.1 upscaling at the start, where the center channel seems to be heavily dialog. Then I toggle through the sound modes, change nothing else, and land back in standard mode, and it plays as 2.1. Center left, center right, and sub. To make this all even worse, I use the remote to change the sound modes because in a few instances, the app will be saying it changed modes, but the mode change on the app did not register on the bar. What's the point? Well, sometimes you just feel like sending someone you should really change that back, Dina. Who, who, who says that? 
if not a catastrophic bug in terms of functionality, it is perfect to cause mass confusion amongst those that are interested in the details. Okay, Samsung, auto changing the mode is bad. Then misleading the customer that it has been changed is extra bad. Don't shoot the messenger, I have no choice. Samsung soft the Q950T is like your star player who is amazing sometimes, but often shows up drunk to the game, shows up to the wrong gym, scores in the wrong basket, puts his jersey on backwards, and gets gassy in the locker room. Okay, back to the regular scheduled program. What happens when you feed Samsung pure LPCM? Remember when I went, uh, 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 which is really unfortunate that I've had to do that twice already? I think the lack of LPCM support might in part manifest itself like this. It's something that has a life. As soon as you like that fire, you're committed. He can't switch off. Audio stretches like this are clearly not acceptable, though it's kind of funny because it's edging into the humorously bad neighborhood. I've mentioned that this behavior has become less common with updates, but it's still too common for sure. What you listen to can still happen without the help of LPCM, though LPCM seems to help this unfortunate circumstance along. You may remember that I demoed a cutout issue in my last video using a different service, a different video, and streaming directly from a Samsung TV. Sweeping all this under the rug, LPCM seems to sound on par with other formats. Here is six underground Atmos via Apple TV plugged into the soundbar directly. Pretty good, but yep, still got a drop out there right at the end. Here's the same clip, but Apple is plugged directly into the TV where LPCM is not then fed down to the soundbar. Other than the dropout in that first clip, I believe the sound quality to be pretty close. Almost the exact same average dB level. All the ear level speakers were active in both streams. The height level channels were quite faint or perhaps even non-existent. I'd really like to hear your comments on height speaker performance during Atmos streaming. I don't think the lack of height channel volume is a bug as I observed the same behavior on the SN11RG. I think this is maybe a Dolby Digital Plus Atmos limitation or perhaps a movie soundtrack limitation. If LPCM was really being downscaled to stereo, we would get center left, center right, and sub in standard mode. You know, the real standard mode. I'm trying to stay humble. It's not unthinkable that I'm missing something. But really, the appreciable downside of plugging LPCM right into the bar seems to be audio stability, not downscaling. Moving on. All right, Dolby versus DTS. Which sounds bigger, better, badder on this bar? I wish I could play the same videos in both formats. That's not terribly feasible, unfortunately. First, DTSX. Jurassic Park Fallen Kingdom. If I'm buying a DTSX Blu-ray, it is darn well gonna double as a babysitter. These tots like their dinos. Versus Dolby True HD Atmos, Mad Max. Jurassic Park sounded good. I mean, it's an awful movie, but you get the stomps and fireballs and the Chris Pratt effect happening all around you. Mad Max with Dolby True HD. This is maybe an unfair comparison because Mad Max is perhaps one of the most tactile, crunchy movie soundtracks out there. I had some friends over that know nothing about what these soundbars can do. They own a soundbar, but they bought it near checkout at... They're good people. Both husband and wife had their gaze fixed on the screen. The reaction I got from them during and after the movie is probably the best endorsement for this bar I've seen. The Q950T can really shine when it has the mind to, when it's not punching the fans. In this matchup, Mad Max, or Dolby True HD, brings more decibels at the controlled volume level, and I'd argue that it brings a closer expression of what 3D sound is supposed to be. Though I'd caveat that by saying sound bars are perhaps not equipped to get you all the way there. Both streams did play in 9.1.4 in standard mode. Next up, DTS-HD Master Audio 7.1, The Revenant. 
also a brilliant soundtrack. Versus one of the most popular Dolby videos out there, Dolby Spheres. Don't downvote me, I couldn't find a darn Blu-ray. I know this is a little silly. I had a little trouble finding a Dolby True HD 7.1 Blu-ray. Help me out and tell me which one to buy. As with Mad Max, I'm quite fond of the Revenant soundtrack. Obviously, I showed a fairly involved and exciting scene, but maybe the unappreciated star in this movie are nature sounds, just so crystal clear and separated on this bar. Yes, it's not technically 3D, but you feel like you're in the forest and highly caffeinated as you can hear every stick break, every water drip and stream, and each bug buzzing by with great clarity. Very raw in a great way. You know that moment when you hear something, that extra thing in a song you didn't know about? Perhaps when you wear good headphones? I got that tingly feeling with this bar and the Revenant. I played Spheres with the NVIDIA TV Pro. This video by definition is designed to sound great, and it does. You get almost precisely the effect you are supposed to get, as I'm not in a perfect room and not all speakers are pointed directly at me. I mean, it's a sound bar. This bar handles 7.1 in standard mode by cutting the left and right side channels. The peak decibel level was a little higher on the spheres than in the Revenant. Closing thoughts, this bar can be a little or perhaps extremely finicky when you are streaming. LPCM may exasperate the dropout. I certainly didn't experience tracks being downscaled to 2.0 with LPCM. Well, maybe during the cutouts. Again, happy for you to tell me what I'm getting wrong. Obviously, I don't suggest using this bar for a direct LPCM connection. There is something going on there, especially if you have an eARC enabled TV. You are way better off plugging your LPCM spitting machine into the TV and having the TV pass along a more hospitable signal. Listening to a number of Dolby and DTS tracks, I will say that Dolby is perhaps a little fuller, a little louder at a given volume, but DTS is far from broken. I'm not gonna say this is a bad DTS bar. I would maybe rather say it's an exceptional Dolby sound bar when it's behaving. Should note I have yet to experience bar dropout issues when playing physical media. So I think you're pretty safe there. Well, I know this video is kind of goofy, but I hope it gives you a slightly clearer picture of what this bar is with all its highs and all its lows. Let me know if I should make more videos like this one with other bars or delete this video right away. Look for a new soundbar review in the not too distant future. Catch you on the next one.